A few years back, I made a pilgrimage to our convent, Our Lady of Manawag, and I spent an afternoon waiting for the sunset, walking in the quiet road of our Dominican novitiate, where our Dominican novices spend more than a year there in seclusion for prayer and spiritual formation. We could not visit them without the explicit permission of the novice master. Since I did not give, I did not get, I did not ask for permission, I was just staying and walking quietly on the road. And then it was Angelus time. At Angelus, there are so huge bells in Manawag that when it rings, it's, you don't need an alarm clock. If you are in the convent, you will wake up. If you are awake and you are talking to somebody, you might have to stop speaking because of the sound of the bells. If we put those bells here and we make it ring, maybe it's scandalous. It's so loud. You will have to bow your head in prayer. And I did. And the novices were there praying. I drew close to them so that they could see me. I could see them too, only in that moment of prayer. And I noticed after the prayer, they say one more line. There is a leader who says, stay with us, Lord. And they answer, for evening draws near. That prayer is taken from the gospel today. That prayer is like a summary of the experience of the disciples walking in that road of Emmaus and Jesus walking with them, conversing with them, debating with them. And they did not know it was the Lord. They were more focused on their conversation, maybe their debate. In fact, the Lord was quoting scriptures to them. They did not recognize the Lord. It was evening. They wanted the Lord to stay with them. It was them who invited the Lord, stay with us. Maybe for practical purposes. Don't go on walking there in the dark. We have a place to stay. Stay with us. You know what happened when the Lord stayed with them. He broke the bread, said a blessing, gave the bread to them, and their eyes were opened. They recognized the Lord. Look at these disciples. They asked the Lord to stay with them because it was already evening. They have already walked seven miles. They don't want the Lord to walk farther. But because of what the Lord did, because of their recognition of the Lord, they walked. They walked back. They walked back to Jerusalem and proclaimed that indeed the Lord was risen. Brothers and sisters, this is the effect of a prayer. This is the effect when we pray, stay with us, Lord. Maybe tonight, maybe some other nights, that you find yourself praying by sunset, by sundown, toward evening. Just pray a silent prayer. Stay with us, Lord, for evening draws near. Stay with me, Lord, for night is coming. That prayer is very powerful. It changed the lives of the disciples themselves. Let us look at one particular apostle and how his life was changed. And I'm referring to Peter. In the first reading and in the second reading, we find Peter. In the first reading, it is from the Acts of the Apostles. And we find here a resurrected Peter. He was nowhere. He betrayed the Lord towards his agony. Remember, the cock crowed thrice. That was the last we hear of Peter.
Peter denying the Lord. No, I'm not his, I'm not his follower. And the cock crowed thrice, and Peter was gone. And the Lord died. Peter was gone. And the Lord was buried. Peter was nowhere. And the Lord was risen. Here we find Peter. This is a resurrected Peter. I call him Peter the preacher. Peter the denier is suddenly telling the people, the Jews, these are the same people who crucified the Lord. Now he's telling them about the faithfulness of the Lord even to, up to the point of accusing them, you were the ones who crucified him, etc. But he's proclaiming his faith. He who abandoned the Lord was not abandoned. So in the first reading, we find Peter the preacher proclaiming the faithfulness of the Lord. In the second reading, it's really taken from his letter. It's still Peter here, from the first letter of Peter. And he was giving some advice. What was his advice? He was telling the Jews, when you talk about Jesus, talk about him with reverence. In some other translations of the original, he tells them, converse with fear. Put a little fear there. Do not talk about Jesus as if he were an ordinary person. The rest of your life, when you Talk about Jesus. Talk about him with a little fear. Not the fear that made him run away, but a resurrected fear. This is what we call a holy fear. A holy fear of the Lord. And that was what Peter was counseling the Jews. After all, Peter learned his lesson. And not only that Peter learned his lesson, the resurrection of Peter is that he did not only learn a lesson, he wrote about it also. He spoke about it also. He preached about it and he also died for it. Brothers and sisters, this is the effect of listening to the gospel today and taking it to heart. If we make this gospel our prayer, we will say to the Lord, Lord, stay with me, for evening draws near. Lord, stay with us. And when the Lord stays with us, He will change us. First, he will change the bread. He will say, this is my body. He will change the wine. He will say, this is my blood. You will line up. Body of Christ, amen. And our eyes will be opened and we will say, were not our hearts burning within us when we listened to his words? Were not our hearts burning within us when he broke the bread before us? And from here, we will run to our own Jerusalems. We will meet our own friends and we will say, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to us.